I know, you know, this work is not going to be, uh, you know, already. I mean, almost a medical like, mission to Cambodia, people, a third world country halfway around the globe. Our team consists of a random group of Americans, one doctor, four physician assistants, two nurses, one nurse practitioner, a retired construction worker, a firefighter, a medical office manager, a waitress, and a few family members of our team leader, Rindy Nong, a physician assistant and member of the Cambodian Baptist Mission of Palm Coast. Our team will be greeted on the ground by a group of Cambodians who will act as translators and guides. For many of our team, this is the first medical relief trip ever, and for a few, it will be their first trip outside of the United States. I think that time the car is over. If they had leave, usually it's down in the summer. And then me and Scott, my brother to medicine, so I don't know. We go to shop around for medicine. Oh. Well, we're gonna buy some uh, medicine, uh, especially the anti-parasite uh, parasite medicine. It's cheaper down there than here. Here it costs a lot of money. You cannot afford to buy here. Like 10, uh, 10 day supply of over like $200. So to buy down there is cheap, like ten dollars for um, an hour, but more cheap. And it's good medicine. It, um, it's a crop in there. They, they make it from India. My name is Laura Stewart, and I live in Port Orange, Florida, and I am a medical office manager. What are you bringing to Cambodia to give to the people? We are taking um, personal hygiene items, toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap. Um, over-the-counter medication, things that they don't necessarily have access to um, that we can take and help them. My wife Laura and I have received nearly 100 pounds of medical, vision, and personal hygiene supplies from the generosity of friends. Others will bring toys for the village children and some will bring generous cash donations that will be used to purchase medications in Cambodia and cover incidental and unforeseen expenses, which our team will certainly encounter along the way. We have chapstick, and we have hand sanitizer. A bunch of them. Nice. A lot of people ask me, and they're kind of asking all of us, uh, why are you doing this trip? And have a hard time understanding that we do this totally at our own expense. Someone asked you that, how would you explain, like, how would you explain it to them? I have been asked that question multiple times as far as why I, you know, am, am going on this trip and why I am funding it myself. And uh, my answer is virtually the same every time. It's because it's something I want to do and something I, I feel like I need to do in my life to fulfill some kind of a void that... I haven't been able to fulfill yet. A lot of people do ask if, if we're sponsored by people for this trip. And um, when I tell them, no, we're not, they don't understand. I just cannot answer it. I get, emotion I get emotional about it because I can't find the words for it, but it's in here. Right. What part of the trip are you most anxious or nervous about? I'm, I'm most nervous and anxious that when we get off the airplane and we go through customs in Cambodia and I have a 50 pound suitcase full of uh, supplies, medical stuff, I, I'm, I'm afraid that the stuff is going to get confiscated. That's, that's what I'm really worried about. Other than that, I'm not worried at all. Our team arrives by plane into the Cambodian capital city, Phnom Penh. 28 hours of travel time halfway around the world and we are all excited to finally have reached our destination. But for those of us who have never been to Cambodia, there is always the nervous anxiousness of being in an unfamiliar country. First, a tourist visa must be purchased for 30 U.S. dollars and a basic application, which is filled out on the plane before disembarking. After our visas are cleared, we are ushered over to the passport check and we are officially in the country. Retrieving our check bags has all of us a little nervous, 
Our bags are filled to the max with our medical supplies, each bag maxed out at the 50 pound limit. We're carrying everything from antibiotics to toothbrushes. Airport security surrounds us. They seem to know why the Americans have arrived. Our bags skip the final x-ray station and are loaded onto a cart and we are escorted through the crowds of people at the airport exit into our waiting transportation. Our drivers take us into the heart of Phnom Penh where we arrive at our first stop. We will check into a small family-run hotel and try to get some rest. It's already late and we are informed that there will be a 7 a.m. wake-up call so we can meet our Cambodian counterparts for breakfast at a local restaurant. So we go from here to go to the shop of medicine and then we go to check out and if we're gonna pick up another family and we go pay for close up. Uh, in the morning, we wake up early in the morning, we're gonna go to Yao. It's a place that we're gonna see the patient. In the morning. We can work all day long tomorrow. Just as much as we can. And, one, and then the next day we see another village. But every day different village. A four-hour drive along the unpaved highways into west-central Cambodia, along with a 12-hour jet lag, has taken its toll on everybody, but we arrive safely in the town of Prasat. A few adventurous members of our group spend an hour or so exploring the town on foot, but preparations must be made for the next week of treatment. Before long, everybody arrives back at the hotel to pack and sort supplies. We have a lot of medications here that uh, we don't want to take all, uh, all of them out of each trip, so we're going to divide them up into what we think we need for each day. Um, and uh, a lot of these medications are in a box, and it's just one pill in a big box. So we're breaking them up so we can fit them all into a bottle and we can carry them a lot easier and hand them out and distribute them a lot easier. What kind of medications do we have here? Uh, basically, we got medications for worms, uh, mebendazole, and we're going to be warming all the kids and, their, and adults with stomach and diarrhea issues. Um, we've got vitamins, antibiotics, uh, paracetamol or acetaminophen. We've got ibuprofen and a multitude of other medications, including uh, Zantac. Early the next morning, we all head out into the remote village to do what we came here to do. We are greeted by the local villagers, and the team immediately begins to set up. While we work, a small service takes place, and a blessing is given. Each person on our team has a job to do. Some will intake and triage patients, diagnose and prescribe medications, distribute medication from the makeshift pharmacy, perform medical procedures, and some will even help entertain the children. What's she here for? Um, I'm going to get out of that Low back? Mid back? Lower back? Yeah, lower back. Okay. 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 Try to breathe. In a remote village in Cambodia, a small scratch on a leg can quickly turn into a life-threatening infection. 
When this young woman arrived at the clinic, it was clear that she needed immediate attention. Celeste Welch, one of the physician assistants, gathered a couple of team members and went to work. The infection was drained, the wound was packed and dressed, and the patient was given antibiotics. She fell down from the tree two days ago. What was she doing in the tree? <laughs> was it a coconut tree? Every day we are at a new village and the patients keep coming. This little girl had fallen head first out of a tree three days earlier. Her family heard that a medical team was going to be at a nearby village and the entire family loaded onto one motor scooter and drove a half hour seeking care. The family met with Dr. Scott at our field clinic and he diagnosed the child with a broken collarbone. Can we take the shirt off so we can look and see what happens? <laughs> Okay. Where does it hurt? Right there. Okay. Right there. Okay. Is she scared? You're scared. Ask her why she's scared. <laughs> Our supplies are limited, and Mitch Thurston uses the grandmother's traditional Khmer scarf as a sling. The arm is further secured to the body with an ace bandage. Over the counter painkillers are given, along with instructions on how the injury should be taken care of. This is called a sling. This part's the sling, this is the swath, which holds it to the body. Okay. So essentially you got one holding it up, and then one holding it close to the body. I just don't like how her wrist is, isn't straight. Hi, my Drink it. And she can do this twice a day for pain. Okay. Now, this bone will heal in about six weeks. As the days grind on, the trip begins to take its toll on the team. Difficulty adjusting to the food can cause severe dehydration. That, combined with lack of sleep and fatigue, can bring anybody to the breaking point. We begin our trip treating the locals, but soon we have to tend to a casualty of our own.
Everywhere we go, the patients keep coming. This man was discharged from a hospital and sent home, even though he had an infection from an IV. When he was asked why he was in the hospital in the first place, he said he couldn't remember. Not only is this trip taking a physical toll on some, it is certainly taking an emotional toll on all of us. In time, each and every one of us will reach a point where we are overcome with emotion that just can't be held back. Why are you crying? Because he actually needs help to be in the hospital. I wish I could do more. I can't. Every child in every village is dewormed. If they are old enough to walk or are younger than 13 years old, they get medicine. When the chewable pill is given, a permanent mark is put on the right thumbnail and a small care package containing personal hygiene items is given to the child. The mark on the thumbnail will let the team know that the child has already received the worm medication and will prevent a second dose being given if one of the children decides to sneak back in line and attempt to receive another care package. The days can get long and Autumn Paris helps keep the children entertained. She has brought 75 hula hoops all the way from the United States and will leave a few at each village we stop at. All Autumn has to do is give a quick demonstration and the children quickly catch on. Every afternoon in each village a communal meal is cooked. Some days it's boiled banana flowers and fish and in the more poverty stricken areas it may only consist of a simple rice porridge. But wherever we go, I feel a deep sense of community. They must share and work together simply to survive. It is a wonderful human instinct that I'm afraid many of us in the world have had the luxury to forget. You want to change? It's okay. Oh. In one village, a pig is slaughtered and cooked for our team. We gather around on top of the standard raised platform and enjoy one of the best meals of the entire trip, which consisted of coconut juice, rice, pork, and roasted corn. Yes, thank you. All of that? You can eat? Oh, yeah. I can eat that. Chamoy. Chamoy. I finally get a chance to sit and talk to some of the children, and what a better way to start a conversation than with proper introductions. No matter where I travel, I've realized that a difference in language is not really a barrier, but more of an icebreaker. And children, well, no matter where you go, the children are the first ones to let you know when you screw up. <laughs> <laughs> we chase the sun around the world to a country most of us never thought we would get a chance to see. 
people welcomed us into their lives with open arms, and what we gave was returned tenfold. So why do we do what we do? I guess my wife Laura said it best as she pointed to her heart. I can't find the words for it because it's in here. Thank you.